Alrighty, Josh Rubin from East West Healing Performance. Today I want to talk to you about anemia. Now there's many different types of anemia. And the first thing is if you do have it, you need to know what type you have. And the only way you're going to know is to really do maybe some type of blood testing with your doctor or your practitioner. Now, the first type is actually called pernicious anemia. This is more of your intrinsic factor anemia. And this happens from basically dietary or lack of dietary intake of proteins like meats and things like that, healthy organic grass-fed meats as well as some type of stomach dysfunction, whether it's a bacterial dysfunction, gastritis, hypochlorhydria, which is not enough hydrochloric acid, on and on and on, or just altered pH. The next type is actually a B12 deficiency. There's many different ways you can develop a B12 deficiency. It could be dietary, it could be external things, and internal things like pathogens, could be a, a gut dysfunction. Most of the B12 in your body is actually produced and absorbed or synthesized in the stomach in the large intestine. Now, this video isn't to go in how or what are all the reasons for B12 deficiency. I'm going to get to the reasons for this clip in about a minute or a couple seconds. The next type of anemia is iron deficiency anemia. And you see this a lot in people, and you actually see it quite often in people with GI issues. You see it in people with colitis, uh, diverticulitis, Crohn's disease, like all these IBS, all these IBD diseases. Most people have anemia. And the funny thing is most doctors will actually prescribe the child iron. Most doctors, you see it all the time, you see someone with Crohn's, the doctors actually give them iron because they find that the inflammatory sites actually have a lot of iron in it, but over time, these people actually develop an anemic condition. So they have fatigue, they have weakness, right? So the question is, if you have anemia, the question is, why do you have an iron anemic condition? Why are you deficient in iron? Instead of taking the iron, you need to figure out why you are deficient. Now, let's look at the gut. The interesting thing about the gut is you actually have E. coli in your gut. And E. coli is so important because it actually helps you break down lactose. Like I mentioned in my other YouTube clips on the gut, check them out. Your villi or microvilli release lactase to break down lactose. This is in your small intestine. So if you have a problem in your small intestine, you really might not be lactose intolerant. You really just have a small intestine dysfunction. You need to heal that system. So you have this E. coli to actually break down lactose, right? And if you don't have enough, you can't break down lactose. But at the same time, you have this E. coli in your gut to actually synthesize and absorb vitamin K, B1, B2, um, B3, B6, B12, folic acid. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Um, uh, no, pantothenic acid. So you have E. coli actually helps absorb this and synthesize it. So you could say you have a B12 deficiency maybe because you don't have enough E. coli in your gut. Now... When you don't have enough E. coli or a balance between, we should say, anaerobic and aerobic bacteria in the entire GI system, you actually start to develop altered pH, how you break down foods, how your liver is working, and your pancreas and your small intestine, on and on and on. But to make a long story short, this orchestra is not working, so it actually creates the environment for pathogenic bacteria, parasites, and fungus to actually overgrow. So the question is, do we actually get these things or do we create the environment for them to actually overgrow? Well, I think it goes one of two ways, because if you eat a piece of food that has a pathogen, maybe you actually might get the pathogen. But if you have a healthy gut system, and there's research to show this, you can actually pass that parasite right through your system and you can be fine. The interesting thing about having low amounts of E. coli in the gut and not being able to synthesize these nutrients, you create the environment for bacteria and other things to grow, they found in people with GI issues, or more importantly, people that are diagnosed with um, iron deficiency anemia, that it's actually dangerous to take anemia because you might have the overgrowth of certain bacteria. I'm going to read these bacteria to you. Actinomyces, Mycobacterium, other pathogenic strains of E. coli, and um, cornea bacterium. And I'll put them right down here, all of them. But if you have these bacteria, and because you don't have enough E. coli, they've shown that by taking the iron, you actually feed these pathogens. You constantly feed them. They love feeding on iron. And every time you take iron, you make these pathogens more strong, more strong, or stronger. So the very thing you're trying to get rid of, you're actually strengthening these bacteria, this overgrowth, by taking the iron. And you're the person with the colitis, with the Crohn's, with the IBS, the IBD, whatever you want to call it, that's suffering and nothing's working. Because one of the very things you could be taking is actually making things worse. So I guess the lesson in this clip is 
you need to understand what's going on and why you have a GI problem, why you have colitis, why you have Crohn's, why you have inflammation. It's different for everyone and why you're anemic. You can't just take something without what, without you know, really know, knowing what's going on in the system because you actually be, could be creating a problem. So if you know someone that's taking iron, if you're deficient, if you know someone with a thyroid problem that is taking iron, really do the research because most people from lab testing, we've tested thousands of people, have GI issues, and you could actually be perpetuating your disease by taking this iron supplementation. So do the research. You can do tests through GIFX, which is uh, the T GIFX test through Metametrics. You can do other tests through Biohealth Diagnostics. You can do it through your general practitioner, on and on and on. You can call us to do it through us to see what's going on in GI system. So hopefully you've learned something. I've been, I've been away for a week. I was in San Francisco teaching a course. I had a great time up there. I just wanted to get a clip out this week to all you guys. So check it out. Tune in. I'll see you next week for some more great YouTube clips. Don't forget to check out our website at eastwesthealing.com where you can link to our blog, our YouTube page, our Facebook, our Blog Talk Radio page. Check it out. Link to us. We'll check you later. Peace.